three things to say, only uh, one of which is a question. <laughs> uh, first of all, thank you so much on behalf of the students for coming and speaking to us. Um, second of all, I just wanted to guarantee I have no signs or alternate outfits to show for you. Um, third of all, <laughs> my actual question. Uh, the Security and Prosperity Pact um, that you signed uh, several years ago, I just wondered if you could uh, talk about that and you talked about the NAFTA becoming stale and, and the effects that that's having and ways to revitalize that. I wonder if you could do the same thing for the SPP um, and also speak toward some groups that allegate that you may be using this as a, a thorough way to create a North American currency. Um, I know you spoke about the euro a minute ago. Uh, let me talk with all modesty here and all humbleness and maybe talk a little about my frustrations. When I see Obama today, it recalls me of Fox yesterday. The same <laughs> enthusiasm, the same uh, joy, the same hope, the same everything. And uh, also I recall that as well as President Obama came to Mexico about a week ago, brought in hopes and uh, motivation to us in Mexico. President Bush came to Rancho San Cristobal. First visit, first official visit abroad, and it was to the ranch to give a kiss to my mother. Imagine how proud I was that day. I mean, <laughs> the President of the United States coming to that teeny little ranch, 500 families, to kiss my mother. And, uh, and to talk about our commitments. Both of us were starting our administrations. Uh, I'm speaking about 2001. And we came with one single agreement. Because NAFTA was not stagnant then. NAFTA was dynamic and moving. But the problem of migration also at that time was on the radar, that it was getting more and more complicated. So we came with the agreement that we would go for a immigration reform, a total immigration reform. And that was the only one single commitment that came out of it. And we started moving and committing and meetings and doing and doing. And uh, four days in advance of September 11th, I was in Congress, US Congress, addressing both houses of Congress and uh, beautiful. Uh, I mean, I couldn't think of a better day for Mexico, for migration, and for me. And I had meetings with the different committees that had to do with uh, the migration issue. The economy was doing well, and everything was ready to go. Everything was approved. We said, let's go ahead, let's move. And four days later, September 11th. And everything changed. Absolutely everything changed, and uh, priorities changed. So we had to deal with a new situation. And then I listened from President Bush. He said, Vicente, I'm sorry, but we cannot proceed with the immigration reform at this point in time. I have other priorities, and I have to concentrate on those. Okay, fine, we wait for a year's time or more, and we will deal with this subject later later. So we did. But next year, when, we, when I came back to him, he said, okay, uh, George, let's go. Let's work on migration. It's getting complicated. We can solve. We can bring in a solution. He said, no, Vicente, right now I'm close to the next election. I mean, I cannot present to public opinion in the States right now a reform on immigration. I mean, we would not make the boats that we need. She's saying, Chingao. <laughs> <laughs> you know Chingao? <laughs> That's a very top, yeah? Okay, we, we finish now. <laughs> uh, and uh, and uh, so nothing happened. So we went uh, uh, next year and same explanation. He said, look, the only way we can do this, why don't we start with security? I have to commit with public opinion in the States that security goes first, then migration. So I'm going to build a wall. And I said, what? <laughs> he says, I'm sorry, Vicente, I have to build a wall. 
and I had to bring the, the, the army, and the guard there to the, okay, but well. So next time it was his own re-election, he said, no, I couldn't do it. I mean, let me re-elect, and once I'm re-elected, then I'm sure. The first year I'm re-elected, then we go for the reform. That recalls me of uh, President Obama recently said that for this year, no, migra no migration reform. That is going to be for next year. And so I don't know if we're going to be seeing the same story all over again. And uh, I just finished because they're telling me it's time. That's why leadership is so important. In government, it's very easy to go by the polls, to go by public opinion, and to go by the next election. The real leaders have to forget about that. They have to go for responsible actions, no matter what it takes, no matter how complicated it is. And in government, it's very frequent that you face this dilemma. You are a responsible government. You increase taxes because you know you are going to need that money to build human capital. Or Hugo Chavez. What you want, here it is. Don't worry. How much fish you want, here's all the fish you want. They never teach how to fish. They are responsible. And that's a key issue in every leader's position, in every leader's position, in the family, at work, in your business, in your school, in your university, everywhere. You are always faced with, you take the decision that you believe in, that is according to your values or your commitments, or you go by what others expect from you. Muchas gracias, que Dios les bendiga. Bye -bye. like to ask Mrs. Fox, Fernando Ganosa, and Gonzalo Romero to, to come up on the stage for a moment. President <laughs> <laughs> uh, Fox, uh, we thank you very much for sharing us, uh, your ideas, your insights, and your time with us today. Uh, we are sure that uh, the Arden community is now richer for having you here with us today. Uh, as a token of our appreciation, we would like to present you with two gifts. It's for me. It's for me. <laughs> 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 Thank you.